Hey guys, this is Bodega, and I'm here today with Daniela Melody Perez. Hello. How are you doing today? I am amazing. How are you? I can't complain. How was your day so far? Really good. Saw some babies, did a photo shoot, and I'm here. Oh, wow. How, tell me about the photo shoot. So I do a 31 Days of Halloween. So today we went to Untemeyer Gardens in Yonkers, and we shot Medusa. Oh, wow. So I had a friend who does her own makeup, yeah. headpiece spray painted a random mask to make it the dead dude. Yeah. Well, and we just, you know. What was the process behind that? How long did that shoot uh, like, take? We literally took it in 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah. She did, she's, a, she's a makeup artist. So she yeah. did all her makeup on her way before she saw me. She had her headpiece set up. I knew exactly the location we wanted to shoot at. So the, the one taking the, in the picture was a makeup artist? Yes. So she did okay. her own makeup. So she showed up ready to shoot. She had like this like, um, like snake headpiece. So all I had to do was bring the, the head she was ready to pose, so we were in and out because 31 days is a lot, so we try to keep it as minimal pictures set yeah. as possible. How many days ahead do you plan for this? So uh, just explain a little bit. So this is like uh, 30 days for like Halloween yeah. or? so I love Halloween. So I shoot, I post on the 1st to the 31st of Halloween, which is 31 different concepts, 31 individuals or groups of people. I actually started in January. Like it snowed one day, so I got like my first shoot in January. And then we did some, I did like one in June, one in July, okay. but now like it's starting to speed up. So we're like mm. doing like five shoots every weekend from now to the end of September okay. so that we can kind of like jump past that process. Like I have a couple of makeup artists, so they're doing like three or four looks in a day and we have everything planned out. Like I'll try to order this stuff like the week before, but most of the stuff people like have on their own yeah. or we just come up with it in the spot based off all the random props and costumes I have in my house. So this is, this is like a, almost a whole year. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Halloween's yeah. a big deal, so we go, we go hard for sure. Why is it your favorite holiday? It's the most selfish holiday. Explain. You don't have to buy anyone a gift. You can do whatever you want. You, if you want to wear a costume, you wear a costume. Yeah. If you want to stay home and watch Halloween movies, you stay home. Like, it's the, it's the one holiday you could do whatever your heart desires. So, like, I always go out, get dressed with a Halloween costume. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, this project really started during covid Oh. It was like a lot of people were like, it was like, you know, hey, I know COVID's not really happening, but like, I'm gonna do a Halloween shoot. Yeah. Do you want to just like get a costume? Because most people weren't gonna go out that year. So you started around this like 2020. Yeah, yeah. So this is year three um, of us doing it, and um, yeah, yeah. So like, it was like, hey, there's nothing else to do. Yeah. You want to have a Halloween photo shoot because you're probably not gonna go out that day. So at least everyone got to like, ex like 31 people got to experience some sort of Halloweenness in that month. Do you have a favorite one, like a favorite picture so far? Right. Um, you gotta pick your number one. So my first year, my favorite picture is of, um, I don't know your age, so I might be aging myself, but I don't know if you remember when um, Michael J. Fox did Teen Wolf. It's okay. I'm aging myself. It's fine. So it's a 1980s movie, but so my friend's a special effect makeup artist, so we turned my friend who's mm -hmm. Vietnamese and black, and we turned him into a werewolf. Yeah. But he also had like the Chicago Pools jacket, mm -hmm. like tight jeans, and we went to a basketball court, and he was just like dunking and everything in the full like makeup. Oh wow! So it was a really cool experience seeing him transform into the character and then also capturing it. So year one, that was my favorite, and then last year I had my godsons who are twins, and we just put them in these like monkey masks, and like in like overalls and like a dead sunflower field, and they looked creepy. Like, their dad's already like, what do you have him doing this year? And he's already like, oh, he's it's already too hyped? scary. Too scary. I'm like, no, we're just, it's going to be super chill. It's how, how do the kids like it? Oh, they, they're, they're, they, they still use the mask and they put them on their, like, they have these two little gorillas. So they use the mask everywhere. Oh, that's dope. So they're just, like, super into it. What they did was, like, I show them the, the mask. I'm like, is this scary? And they're like, no. So they put them on. And what happened? They got scared when they looked at each other. Oh, wow. Because they're only, they're only four. Yeah, yeah. So they were fine until they saw someone else. Oh. A that's small just, uh, child yeah. staring at them in a weird monkey mask yeah. and overalls. That's, that freaked them out a little uh, bit. So I was like, okay, just like close your eyes when you don't look at each other. We're I guess when it's not an emotion. Yeah, I was like, just close your eyes. Don't look at each other. We're going to mm -hmm. keep it going. We're going to keep rolling it. So. so so this Halloween, this is one of your like several series that you do, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of the concepts, I, I come up fully creatively. Like some people, I give the freedom. Hey, like whatever you want to do, here's some options. So it's a little back and forth because... Coming up with full concepts for 31 Days is a lot, so it's a lot of collaboration with a lot of people. Okay, that's dope. I remember I met you at one of your events at the um, Summer Blossom? Summer Bloom. Sorry, I apologize. Summer Bloom event. Um, can you tell them a little bit more about that event? Because I went to that event not knowing anything. My friend Literally. just invited me. I said, let me just yes. come. 
So uh, I'm, it's a project that we've been working on for the, for the year of 22. It is a project focused on celebrating more women, more stories, more bodies. So we wanted to celebrate um, all, all bodies of women. Uh, so chapter one, uh, so you came to chapter two, ch um, a little back chapter. Chapter one was just a focus on self-love. So we had about eight women posed with fabric. Yeah. And it gave them the power to show what they wanted to hide, show what they wanted to show and hide what they wanted to hide. So they were in control of their body and their story. Chapter two was really a, which you can see behind us, is really a celebration of their scars. We wanted to make sure that the event um, didn't make people feel sorry for these women. It was really about like adorning their scars with flowers and celebrating their stories. So that's really what chapter two was a focus on. So we had um, them write letters to their bodies. We make them read it out loud before we start shooting. And then we make sure to incorporate those letters at the art gallery because yeah. their story is such a big part to these pictures. And even their stories don't really tell what happened to them. They kind of, they, most of them talk about how they feel about the experience. And a lot yeah. of them didn't really share like what actually happened. And just have, each woman has like, each woman that I've shot kind of like helps mold me with my own personal self-confidence and my self-growth as I like meet each woman and read their stories. A lot of these women, um, I did a call out on Instagram. So a lot of them I didn't meet until they got fully known oh, for me wow. at the photo shoot. Like they asked me questions on Instagram, but like I didn't meet yeah, them yeah, face meet to them. face until they were ready to get nude. What's the name of this series? This one is the Summer Bloom series. Oh, so, so chapter one, that's Ch his own name? Or these chapter all together? One, chapter one was Shades of Nude. Okay. This one is a Summer Bloom. Um, tomorrow we start shooting chapter three. Don't have a name for it yet. But, he, but just to clarify, these are all separate series. These are all separate series that are going to be combined into one book. So okay. like that's why I break oh, them up okay. to chapters. So like chapter one would be Shades of Nude. Chapter two would be a focus on Is there like an overall name for or, the, or are you still working on it? We're getting on, on that. You're getting on the that? goal is to have a, a, a title by, by, by the end of next month because we have to go yeah. into publishing. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like a big theme is uh, femininity. And yes. a lot of these works. Absolutely, yeah. It's just, like, like I've been saying, more stories, more women, more bodies. Like, it's really just just creating a space where everyone feels, like, comfortable. I, I've, I've shown these at a couple of other art galleries, and mm -hmm. women have just come to me with their own stories about their bodies. And yeah. just, like, outpouring, like, their appreciation or their frustration or, like, their celebration of themselves. So it's really been a great experience to, like, hear other women talk about their stories and, like, being inspired by the women that that I've been posting. And these are all non-models. These are just women walking around in everyday life that wanted to celebrate themselves. So this is a uh, series, chapter this is, two. This is chapter two. So when, I wanted you to take me through the process of when these, some of these models came in, your friends interaction with some of them, and how you were able to make them comfortable enough to take some of these yes. images, because they're already, these are very powerful images. So we keep it, we keep, we keep the environment very calm. Um, we send emails just to make sure they know what they're getting themselves into. Um, when they come into the room, they have, we have robes for them to wear until they're ready to be just robes. We have gifts for them, because I'm just very appreciative of them just doing all this for them. So like last time we had flowers for them. Before that we had like bath bombs. Chapter three, we're having candles. Um, so before we do anything with their robes on, we sit them down, we turn all the music off, mm -hmm. and we ask them to read their letter out loud. The, whatever letter they wrote about their bodies, they read that out loud. So just clarify, they they write the letter to you first through yes, Instagram? Yes, yes. No, I ask them to bring a letter with them. Oh, okay. So I ask them to write the letter beforehand and to bring it with them. Um, so the first thing that we do is read, read their letter. Mm -hmm. Can it, it's, it's One, it sets a tone. It reminds them of why they're there. Copy. It puts me in understanding of, you know, um, how much they're exposing, what they're comfortable exposing with. I mean, they cry, I cry. It's amazing. Can you give us an example, one story? Oh, my gosh. Oof. Um, so, uh, let me think. So, the first lady here in the, in, the in, the, in the green, her story is about, so she, her di entire digestive system stopped working two years ago, out of nowhere. No reason, no. The doctor's thing is because of her birth control. So really out of nowhere for no reason. And she really just talks about how she didn't value her body. Like, you know, I didn't thank you for everything you did from before. But now, you know, like, you know, basically like thanking her body for everything that's been through her, the body's resilience, the body's strength. I mean, she was crying within the first second. I was, if she was crying at second number two, I was crying yeah. at second number three. Yeah, that's so it was a really just, thing. yeah, really just resetting like everything that why she was here. So once she tells a story, then we know where to place the flowers. Okay, so the flower... Yeah, so we do, then we do flower application. Okay. Um, 
we definitely keep it. Um, we definitely start shooting the face first. I go, hey, so we're going to do a couple of pictures of your face, and then we'll go into your body. Just because, again, it's, a, it's very intimidating. They want to bring a friend. We encourage them yes. to bring a friend. So she brought her husband with her. And her husband was, like, super appreciative of what we were doing, I think I too. saw her when I went to the event. Yeah, and her she and her had husband. so many people there. Yes, I, yeah. Um, so she had a really big village that, like, supported her through all of this. How is that warming up process that when they come, they're just talking for a little bit? Yeah, it's, what well, I, I, like I explained to them, like, photography's fake, right? Like, yeah. it's, nobody, nobody stays like this. Um, no one, you know, it's just, it's all fake, but again, we're here to celebrate you. We also, we also bring, like, positive affirmation cards. So we read a positive affirmation card after we, they read their letter. So they all come, they all, this particular series, they all came knowing they were going to bear their scars. Okay. So this one, they all knew they were going to be new. Mm, so they were like all, prepared. Yeah, they were, I think they prepared themselves. I got a lot of text messages, a lot of phone calls. Yeah. Coming, the weeks coming, I'm like, whatever question you have, like, it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. Am I going to do this? Can I look at the pictures beforehand? I'm going, absolutely. Whatever you need to make you feel comfortable, that's totally fine. Um, so once we laid the pit, once we laid the flowers, then we get like really close up before we start shooting all body. So again, they're not feeling like super overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I do explain to them in the beginning, like we don't show private areas. It might be captured on camera, but it won't be captured at the final event. Yes. And we just like talk it through like, and then it's like, yes, girl, you look good. Oh my God. And slowly you realize, wow, you don't say that about yourself. Like you don't compliment yourself the way you compliment all these other women. Yeah. Um, so we really just keep it super positive. We'll put like, Whatever, whatever they, whatever they're in the mood to listen to. Once, like, once that letter's over, we put music back on, and we just keep it like super calm. If they're not comfortable with a pose, we don't do it. We don't push past their personal boundaries. Um, we'll say, hey, do you want to try this? I don't feel comfortable. We keep, we'll, we'll, Jimmy, we keep go to another pose. Yeah, it's really just about putting them in a space for them to celebrate themselves, not necessarily like it's just I want to capture a particular angle. Yeah, how many women showed up for this series? So for this, chapter. this series was 11 women. 11 women. Yes. And I knew, on a personal level, I knew two of them. Oh, wow. So most of them, like, Are contacted strangers? me through, in yeah, most of them were strangers. I put, a, I put a call out on Instagram, and they, like, friends, like, referred them. What do you think made them want to reach out? So we, we, I think it was really how we worded, how we uh, phrased what we were doing. We, we were literally about celebrating adversity. It was a safe space. We were able to put out push out the video from our first art gallery so it helped people at ease seeing the concept. Yeah. Um, and again, I had really good friends that like referred a lot of friends like, hey, I did this. This is my experience. So a couple of the models that were part of the first series recruited the next group of girls from me. Oh, okay. So they had that comfortability yeah. from, from the, off the bat. Oh, wow, that's great. Yeah, it was really good. So how do you go from the selection process when you pick the individual pictures? That's, that, and that's the hardest part. So it's really, like, one, making sure we're capturing, like, one, obviously making sure we capture the best image of their scars, but also capturing the best image of them that tells the story. Um, so especially, like, for this one here, like, this picture I absolutely uh, love. The, the third one? With the the, the purple? second one. Yeah, this purple one. I absolutely love this picture, and I think it, like, captures all of who she is. What about it you love? I think the way we have the angle just covering, like, the, the front of her body, she's at, like, the way we have the flowers and band-aids on the scar, like, it's really able to not only, like, just show, yeah. like, it doesn't just show their scars, it shows who they are as women. So What's her story, to capture this if you don't mind. So she actually got into a car accident when she was a little kid. Oh. She got hit by a car. And when she got hit by a car, basically her arm was almost shattered. Um, they had to figure out how long her arm would be as, as an adult. Mm. So she had to have reconstructive surgery on her arm. And they had to figure the side, like, what, who was she? In that moment, as a child, they had to figure out who she was going to be as an adult. So, her, like, they had to measure, like, her, whatever arm length that she had post that was going to be for her forever arm. So she was like, yeah, like, she loves, like, and she talks about, you know, I love the fact that, like, there's hair that was never supposed to grow here, and her arm twists, and it's not the same length. But she got into a really bad car accident at a really, really young age. That must have been difficult growing up with the... Exactly, right? So you go through all those, like... Kids be, yeah, kids, be, kids can be cool. And, exactly. And some of them talked about that. We had another girl. She's not posted here, but she talked about how she, uh, her leg was burned when she was little. And, you know, how kids used to make fun of it, just as kids do. But, yeah. you know, you go through all these, like, psychological things internally, and it takes so long to kind of, like, learn to relove yourself. I assume a lot of that stuff came out during the sessions. Oh, my a lot God, of these yeah. conversations. Tears everywhere. So for, like, this young woman in the corner, she has a bit of LIGO, but she only got it four years ago. So you're living your whole life as yourself. Yeah, then I don't know. And then there's a change that you had no idea that could happen. And she says it actually moves. Like, the vitiligo, like, switches. Like, 
You don't. Oh. Ch- it doesn't just stay there. It doesn't like, stay there. She said she used to have a Wu Tang st- sign right over <laughs> her forehead. So she said it changes. Like so, you know, you can't even get comfortable to yeah. how you look because you're always changing. So it was re- for her, she said like, while her vitiligo is like her superpower, it's really, you know, also very intimidating to like live with and learning to like re, like to accept yourself in a whole new way. What made you decide to take these images and pair them up, and pair them up with poem, to, with poets to have so, them perform at your event? So it's, for me, again, it's really about... I didn't want just to post to have these pictures and have other people feel valued and feel self-love. Like, I wanted to make sure that the women who participated felt that they were, like, truly... Like, it was a full-circle experience. So they got to write a letter to themselves. They got to pose. They got to see their pictures. And I thought, like, okay, it's how you... Your letter was how you see yourself, but a poem is, is how the world sees you. Yeah. And they got to see how, like, someone else saw their beauty. So, like, every time I, even when I, every time in, another poet sends me an email, like, I'm crying. Because each girl gets their own private poem. Yes. We don't have them all perform. Because I can't have 11 poets. It's like a whole, there's a yeah. whole different type of uh, event. Yeah, it's a different event, yeah. So, we just get them. How do you select them? That must be difficult in itself. It self, is selecting. selecting so, them. some of them, the way I select, some of them are, like, super, super catered to the individual. And I do want it to be a sense of, like, community. So it really depends on, like, the story, the experience, and how, like, okay, I want them to feel it, but I want someone else in the audience to understand that story as well and connect. How did you reach out to the poets? How you, how Everything you found has them? been through Instagram. Instagram. Like, I've honestly just said, hey, does anybody know poets? And people sent me them, and I'll just, like, slide into people's yeah. DMs. Like, hey, I'm working on this project. I explained the project to them. A lot of people are like, oh, I've never heard of a project like this. I would love to be a part of it great okay this is your task give me your email and i like just coordinate like i'll just make sure like the first time around i did it i knew a lot of the poets on a personal level so i made sure they didn't know who the model was repeat that you said on the first go around yeah so i, I did the poetry for chapter one too so each chapter you're yeah. doing the poets okay. every every girl that poses for me gets a poet oh wow i'm assuming do you repeat poets i haven't yet so we'll yeah. see for chapter three but we haven't we haven't had any repeats this far okay that's amazing how was the editing process? Because I see this is a, it's not, not heavy, there's no heavy no, edits. Yeah, so we definitely kept it. We didn't do anything to edit their bodies um, for us. We felt like it defeated the, 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 the purpose. purpose of the project. So we just did very light, like in terms of a like color correction, um, if things were like overlit, but I love the picture, we made it work. So it was really just about making sure not only that the women glowed, but like making sure it was very vibrant in color and the flowers were vibrant. Because it was really just about a full celebration. So we wanted the colors to be really, really bold. Question for these backdrops, are these like uh, seamless papers? Are these in edit afterwards? No, these are seamless papers. Yeah, seamless so we papers? did it at FD Studios because they have so many different color papers. Yeah. So I was like, okay, we're going to use a place that has tons of paper that we can just grab and go. So we, did, we went to FD Studios and we, we pulled each paper individually. So we picked the color for every girl. So we coordinate the flowers based off like the color that we pulled. How was how do you select flower and color per girl? So um, it depends on we 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 asked them what their favorite color was beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, we definitely based off like their story, we kind of like, pulled a couple of pieces for this yak last young woman. She actually had brought these flowers with her. She said she wanted to use them, and I was like, all right, great, let's go to the wall, see what color coordinate matches, and Are we go with it. Oh, uh, natural flowers like no, uh, not, most of these aren't flowers. So um, these two are dried flowers. These are fake flowers. These are all real. And these two are all real flowers. So we use a lot of, like, dried flowers. So th- were they real at one point? Yeah, but we, like, glued all the dried flowers to them. Um, yeah, so how, how did this concept start in your head? What sparked this for you? So it was really just about, like, celebrating, like, the female body. And for me, it was just a journey through my own, like, self-love and body positivity. Um, so it was really like, okay, if I'm going to go on the journey, let's just bring everyone with me. What caused you to go on this journey? I think it's just like post-COVID, like trying to figure out yourself in life. So it's like, you know what? Like this whole being, like being negative about your body is really exhausting. Yeah. Well, you, do you feel like you were negative about your body? Oh, absolutely. Right. So mm-hmm. like, okay, let's like, let's go into a positive light. Like, all right. So how can we do this? And I've really been, been really big on self-love shoots. Um, this whole concept started with one girl, actually. We were supposed to shoot her last summer. She recently had gotten a, a gastric bypass. Uh, she was part of my first series, and she was actually at the second event as a guest. So she had a gastric bypass, and she was really um, vocal and 
posting a lot on social media about how much loose skin she had from her gastric bypass. So she was talking about how she was learning to love her skin again. Because now you like you know you do the gastric bypass, like, yeah, the weight goes on. She's like a, you have, you end up for some women they end up with a lot of loose skin. Mm. So she was like really open about it. So I was like, hey, do you want to do like a self love shoe? She reached out to you. I reached out to her. Oh, she you was, reached out. Yeah, she was a friend of mine. Okay. And she's like, yeah, let's do it. And you guys met in person before. Yeah, but what happened was um, she ended up having complications from her surgery, so she has to have a couple more surgeries, mm. which just made me like kind of like span out this concept of her and like. I can make this bigger. I can bring more women. I can turn this into a book. And by ja- by the time January rolled in, I was like, okay, so I'm going to do a book, and it's going to be three chapters, and we're going to invite all women, and each chapter is going to be different. I had chapter one. I, all I knew was I knew what chapter one was going to be. And then once chapter one ended, I kind of already had the idea for chapter two. Chapter three came in. It's going to be all about the female relationship. So, like, where they use chapter one, they use fabrics to cover themselves. Here we use flowers. Chapter three, they're going to use each other. So we have question, friendship. Question, sorry to interrupt. Why you decided to go from cloth to flowers? What is the significance of the cloth so and flowers? I think the cloth like created power. It really, one, it was our first time doing it. We wanted to make sure they had control to cover as much of their body as they wanted to. Mm-hmm. So some of them, you can cover your whole self with because we have the fabrics hanging. Mm. So you can cover as much of yourself that you want to, or you can leave the fabric alone and do nothing and show all of yourself. So chapter one was really just about celebrating like the female body and it, its beauty and its sexuality of it. Um, but we gave, everything was about giving them the power. So it was all about, you because every woman decides what's sexy to them. Some, for some of them, sexy is showing everything. For others, sexy is showing nothing. Some, Sexy is a T, sexy is a toe for some people. So for them, they had the full power to show and hide what they felt comfortable with. For the flowers, it was really just about celebrating their scars. So it's kind of like adorning them with flowers. Adorning their scars, we wanted to be vibrant because their stories were so heavy. Yeah. We wanted to make sure that it, we didn't want people, again, we didn't want people walking away feeling like, oh, we feel so bad for these women. Like, no, this is a celebration. Yeah. And they, all of this is a celebration. This is something that they surpass, something they... Exactly. Day. Like it rolls above. For this woman, she has... Um, the one in the red. Yeah, so she has Crohn's disease. She's had about 17... To, she's actually in the hospital. She was in the hospital last week. What's Crohn's disease? It is... I believe it, it affects your digestive system. Don't quote me on it, but yeah. I believe that's what it does. Um, so she's had... Uh, she's had like 17 surgeries. And for her, she said the best... Her last surgery, she had a, she had a daughter. She goes, they open up all her scars to deliver her daughter by C-section. Mm. So for her, it was a really big deal. She's actually going to be part of the last series with her yeah. daughter um, for Chapter 3 as well. So I guess through giving birth, a lot of her emotional scars got opened up too. Exactly. Yeah. It must have been really difficult for her. Yeah, she was really open about everything. Mm. Really open about her experience, about you know, how it affected her. Um, that she, like her, her letter starts with, you can look. You know, you can look at my body, you yeah. can look at my scars. You've probably never seen anyone that looks like me. That's okay. You know, it was re- it, this is really about her doing this for her daughter. Would you capture a great picture of her and her daughter with this picture? Oh! Yes! Oh, oh, oh. So that was her and her daughter. And she oh. kind of did all this for her. It's fu- yeah, because somebody um, just It's one reached, of my favorite pictures. Somebody just reached out to me saying, thank you for the picture that you take. I was like, okay, yeah, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, she like, I, I, when, we, when we saw that, we were like, oh my God, this is exactly, yeah, like, she did all this for her daughter, so to capture that moment. She, her daughter was reaching out to this picture, right? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Now it's all clicking. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was a powerful moment. It really was. I feel like it's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of healing yeah. happening during this. A lot of it happens during the shoot. Yeah. Um, we had one woman, who I don't have her post up right now, but her scar was because she had to give birth to her stillborn baby in order to save mm-hmm. her own life. And her, in her letter, she writes, you know, was I worthy of being saved? And, you know, she cried during her letter. Yeah. I cried during her letter. It was really important for us to have, like, the poetry. Like, I really wanted her poetry to be there for her, for that, because I knew how much I meant for her. Was she doing a lot of self-blame? Um, no. Mm-hmm. It was really, it was, it was, it was yeah. an emergency surgery. It wasn't yeah. really, like, anything she could have held. So what made you get into photography to begin with? So I quit my job one day, and I just, was just like, out the blue. Just out the blue. I was just unhappy. What were you doing? That you. Were I was working in youth development. Okay. And in the youth development. In youth development, I was just like wasn't really growing at that job, so I quit my job, 
and then I bought a camera because I, I just started seeing a lot of people doing things they, they were always passionate about and yeah. I always felt like, oh, I had to have a job. So I was like, you know what? Like if everyone else is doing stuff they're passionate about, so can I. So I bought a camera, tried to figure it out. Then I took a workshop um, at this place in the Bronx, which name I cannot remember. It was an eight-week course. I stopped at week five because of COVID. Mm. COVID hit. I had no one to shoot. COVID slowly. I started doing my 31 days of Halloween. One of the girls that I shot, she worked with another photographer before, and he was looking for an assistant. So I started assisting the photographer, which helped me understand like studio lighting, yeah. like working in a studio, like so. Then like that inspired me to just start taking more workshops. I saw in your so bio you put a, a production assistant. Yes, I'm always down to help. I'm like, listen, I will, I will theme. I will bring backdrops. What do we need? What do we need to make the picture happen? Like, are you I am, still under tutelage with this photographer? Unfortunately, no. He ended up having like knee surgery and has been like mm. out for like a year and a half and has been shooting. But I've helped another photographer by the name of Jordy. Um, I've, I've assisted him a couple times. But now I have, like, a traditional 9 you to know, 5, so it's harder. Just saying that, is you, on this age of, like, uh, people becoming photographers or mm -hmm. videographers or whatever, to say you have a mentor is kind of rare. Yeah. Because I I'm felt myself as a photographer. I don't – I'm all you, uh, YouTube Academy. Honestly, I, I, I've been really lucky. Like, the, um, the social media for photographers, for me, has been phenomenal. There's an amazing photographer. His name is Edward Page. We only know each other through Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked him to help me because I know he shoots himself nude. Yeah. He's, um, he's, he's a full, like, um, digital uh, assistant. Probably wrong title. Dig he does digital tech, but he does it for, like, uh, like big comp like big names. So yeah. I was like, hey, like, this is my concept, but I, I don't know how to shoot nude women. With the lighting, he came, he brought all his equipment, oh, he dope. set it up for me, he set up my lighting, he taught me exactly everything I needed. So, like, because of him, I was able to, like, really push myself to do these projects. Very supportive. Very. I've been very, very lucky. People are really, like, I've been lucky with like, Instagram. Like, there's been tons of girls that I talk to via DM. There's someone that I met through TikTok that, like, I'm always constantly asking her questions. Like, hey, if you don't mind, what was your lighting set up? Yeah. Or, hey, how did you learn this? And, like, people send me, like, articles, things to read. I've been really, really lucky that people have been really open and friendly. These are all Bronx or just uh, across the... Uh... Mostly mostly New York City-based, but uh, there's been a couple that's been further out that I've either... If I find them on TikTok, then I add them on social media, and then, like, after a while, like, we finally start talking through the DMs and just, I've been really lucky. Yeah, I feel like the, the photography community just in general is a really supportive community. Cause it's not really competition because everyone yeah. has a different perspective. So people's hiring you not based off your, based off your perspective. So it's yeah. not really like we're going for the same thing because we're the same person. Yeah. Like everyone has a different perspective. They, they, they hire you because they want you. It's exactly. not like I can't, I can't be you. I don't edit like you. I don't look at things like you. So it's like it's one of the greatest things. Um, I think we're just about to uh, wrap it up. If awesome. you want to give everybody your, um, your Instagram and plug your next event. You can follow me on Melody underscore of moments. There is a book release coming out in December. So stay tuned and find out more. And watch my 31 days of Halloween. All right, guys. Take care. This is episode 11 of Let's Talk. I hope you enjoy yourself. Bye. Oh, wait. That's, that's, that's.